Hi everybody, in this video I have two practice problems involving both magnetic force and magnetic field. Alright, so here's the problem. In the first problem I have a long current carrying a wire with a current to the left. What I want you to figure out is the direction of the magnetic force that the magnetic field of this long current carrying wire would exert on a negative charge above the wire with a velocity in the indicated direction. In the second problem, it's kind of similar, except we have a current loop. I have a current loop that's going to produce a magnetic field at the center of the loop. I want you to find the direction of, fo of the force that that magnetic field at the center of the loop produced by this current will exert on this negatively charged particle moving with a velocity in the indicated direction. All right, so in each case, you're going to have a two-step process. Uh, you need to find the direction of the magnetic field at the location of the charge produced by the particular current configuration. Once you know the direction of the magnetic field, you can use the magnetic force expression for the magnetic force on a moving charge to find the direction of the force. All right, so try to work through that. Try to figure out the directions of the forces on these moving charges. I'll give you a minute to do that, so pause the video. Okay, we're back. All right, so let's do this one first. I need to first find the direction of the magnetic field that this long current carrying wire exerts right here at a location above the wire. So I stick my thumb in the direction of the current, wrap my fingers in the direction, and those fingers will be in the direction of the magnetic field. At the location of this moving charge, the magnetic field is into the board. Now I want to emphasize something. This is the magnetic field produced by the current carrying wire. It's not the magnetic field of the moving charge itself. It produces its own magnetic field, but it's not exerting a force on itself with its own magnetic field. All right, so this charge is experiencing a force due to the magnetic field produced by this current carrying wire. The current carrying wire produces a magnetic field that's into the board at the location of the charge. That's what we want to consider when we're trying to find the direction of the force on the moving charge. All right, so we then go to the force law. The force vector acting on this moving charge will be the charge multiplied by this cross product V cross B. All right, B, the direction is in, so I need the cross product of the velocity of the charge and the magnetic field at the location of the charge produced by the current carrying wire. So we need a cross product of basically these two vectors, V cross B. V cross B will be this way. Let's draw that in. Now we're not done yet. That's the direction of V cross B. But I have a negative charge that's experiencing this force. All right, if I had a positive charge, if this were positive, this would be the direction of the force, but I have a negative charge, so I've got the negative of this direction, so the negative of that direction gives me direction that way. And that is the direction of the force on the moving charge, this moving negative charge. Let me just emphasize something. These are both perpendiculars because the cross product of any two vectors is perpendicular to both the vectors that go into that cross product. All right, now I'm not going to work out the magnitude, but we could have done that. Um, we found the direction of the magnetic field that this current carrying wire produces right here. That was in to the board. We could find the magnitude of that magnetic field by knowing this physical constant mu naught, putting the value of the current in, dividing by 2, dividing by pi, and this r perpendicular is the distance, the perpendicular distance from the wire to the location we want to know the magnetic field. Well, we'd want to know the location of the magnetic field at the location of the charge, because that's what's experiencing, uh, exerting a force on this charge. So this would be the r perpendicular dimension. Once you have that, you could put that with this. The magnitude of the force expression over here, right, if you have a scalar multiplying a cross product, the magnitude of that whole thing is the absolute value of the leading scalar, and then the magnitude of the cross product. All right, so if we knew the absolute value of the charge, if we knew the speed, 
which is the, the magnitude of the velocity. If I know the magnitude of this magnetic field, which I calculate here, the sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field, well, in this case, that'll be 90 because the velocity is this way. The magnetic field is that way. It's 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. You could calculate that as well. All right, so here you got the direction. And through this process, you could also get the magnitude of the force uh, that the magnetic field of this current carrying wire at this location exerts on the moving charge with this velocity. Okay, similar process over here. Uh, first, I need to find the direction of the magnetic field that this current carrying wire produces right here. I can stick my fingers, curl my fingers in the direction of the, of the current. I'm using the special right-hand rule for the magnetic field direction for a current loop. Thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop only. It's a very specific right-hand rule for loops. So that's out. If I don't like the right-hand rule for special one for loops, I can just pick a representative current segment. If the current's going this way, then right here the current's going that way. Stick my thumb in the direction of the current, my fingers wrap around, and at the center of the loop they're coming out, so that's consistent. All right. If I want to know the magnitude of the magnetic field, I could just plug and chug with a formula where R is the radius of the loop, and this is only good for the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of a loop only. So it doesn't give it the values anywhere here, just at the center. Okay, now I can find, use the force expression for the magnetic force on a moving charge produced by a magnetic field. Uh, first, I want to take this cross product, V cross B. So V is the velocity of the charge. That's this way. The magnetic field is out, so I need the cross product of V cross B. V cross B would be that way. I'll put that on here just temporarily. V cross B. Now, if this charge had been positive, I would have positive times V cross B, and the, and the force would be in that same direction. But this charge is negative, so I've got a negative thing times V cross B. That gives me a vector in the other direction. So that's the direction of the force. And again, these are perpendiculars because the cross product of any two vectors is always perpendicular to both of the vectors that go into that cross product. All right, if I wanted to find the magnitude of this force, well, I'd have a similar thing. The magnitude of this expression is this. So if I found, had found the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of the loop, then if I know the speed of the charge, uh, absolute value of the charge, the magnet, magnitude of the magnetic field goes in there. Uh, again, I had a 90 degree angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. The velocity was this way, the magnetic field was that way, so that was sine of 90 degrees is 1. All right, and I could calculate the magnitude of that force as well. So I'd have the magnitude and the direction. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.